Hey folks, it's GDP, Editor-in-Chief of Snooth, of course. I'm here at the end of the day. I just finished tasting two cases of Portuguese red wines. As you might know if you've read my work in the past, I love the red wines of Portugal. I think they're some of the best values on earth. There's a tremendous range of styles available there, from real old school wines that spend too much time in wood and <clears throat> get dried out but are rich with vanilla flavors, and a lot of people like that, to full-on modern, soft, low-acid, creamy, rich, ripe, fruity types of wines, which just don't do it for me, but certainly are very popular and have a place in the marketplace. 24 bottles of wine we're tasting today. I've got the four best wines here lined up um, to go over briefly with you. There's a little bit of uh, thunder and lightning going on outside, so uh, hopefully I won't lose power and this will be continuous, but you might see some flashes of lightning and you'll certainly hear some thunder out there, and it's not the thunder of Portuguese reds, but that would be appropriate, wouldn't it? So we have, uh, we've got four wines, as I said. I believe it's four, di it's four different regions. Um, the first one we're going to start with is the Grau Vasco from Dao. It's a 2010. It's uh, a blend, an unspecified blend of Jaune, Tinto Rorich, and Turiga Nacional. And it says it right there in that part of the label. As you can see, it's a 13% alcohol. It's not the best wine of the day, but at $7, it is one of the best values of the year. It's a little simple on the nose, fruity, floral, a little bit of wood. Mm. It has that classic Portuguese austerity on the palate, which I love. Classic European table wine. It's not a big wine. Very nicely balanced, refreshing acidity, a little citrusy, a little orange zest on the nose and on the palate. Modest tannins, but they're dry and bristly. They go spectacularly well with food. Um, it's full of cranberry and raspberry tart, red flavors. Easy to drink. Could take a slight chill. Like I said, it's seven dollars. It's an absolutely brilliant value, and this is um, decidedly uh, traditional in style. Um, not, not fancy, not trying to be fancy, just a good all-around wine. Um, the next wine is the Avaleda Follies. Um, it's a blend of 70% Torriga Nacional and 30% Cabernet Sauvignon. Now here is a decidedly more modern wine. 14% um, alcohol from Bayrada. Uh, at 11 bucks, this is just a brilliant wine. Um, the Cabernet adds a little familiarity to everything. Uh, Torriga Nacional is wonderful on its own. Um, together, they really make a wine that has some complexity, beautiful texture, lots of fruit, a little bit modern. Like I said, this is a fabulous wine for a party. It's all um, a little citrusy, a little green floral, uh, very violety, very Torriga Nacional on the nose. The green floral is a little bit of the Cabernet herbaceousness probably coming through. Gentle oak spice. Mm. And I love this one because it's austere, it's focused, but it has beautiful fruit. It's transparent, it's fresh, it has great length. Um, for an $11 wine, this absolutely rocks it. Yeah, it's, it's a medium bodied wine, but the flavors are kind of dark and black, black cherry and spicy. So you think it's going to be a bigger wine, and it sort of gives the impression of being a bigger wine, but really it's just. Mm. Very pretty, pretty medium-bodied wine, a little bit of elegance, pretty refined for 11 bucks. I mean, that's that's a great find. I've had this wine before. I've shared it with friends. Fabulous for barbecue. Like I said, it's a good party wine, too. It has enough acidity to keep the mouth refreshed. It has enough fruit so that uh, it doesn't get tiring to drink. Lovely stuff. So the next wine is the 2010 Vista Torriga Nacional from Veras. Uh, 100% Tariga from a region that doesn't get a lot of attention. Teo gets a lot of attention. Duro, of course, gets a lot of attention. Dao gets a lot of attention. Um, this clocks in at $10 again. Uh, Tariga Nacional is a beautiful variety, of course, most famous for use in port. Um, but on its own, it makes a really fascinating kind of uh, wine. Beautiful floral profile in the nose, plummy fruit. This is weird, though. This is an unusual one. It's peppery and gamey. It's very gamey. It's very beefy on the nose. 
spicy, a little herbal spice. It really reminds me of Syrah from the Northern Rhone on the nose. Mm. Moderately rich with that dry austerity from Portugal that's so typical. Great acids, great tannin, a little pomegranate on the finish, plummy. Power. Again, this has got a, a significant amount of power for a $10 wine. Earthy, complex, nuance, very sophisticated wine. Um, this actually has been open for a couple of hours now, and it's getting better. It's gotten better and better as it's breathed a little bit. It is weird. It's a weird Tariga Nacional, but... I definitely like that. I definitely think it's a, an impressive wine. Um, and you have to pay a little bit of attention to it. Oh, the finish is fabulous. Great acids, good length. You have to pay a little attention to it because it's a little subtle and a little weird, but it rewards attention. And the, the last wine of the day, and arguably the top wine, depending on your palate, of course, is this Bridal from Teo. Uh, Classico Vino Tinto 2011. And once again, it's a $10 bottle of wine. These are just Stunning values for 10 bucks. Um, this is a blend of Torriga Nacional, Castellau, Tinta Rorige, and Trincadera. And here you definitely get another layer to the aromatics. There's a lot of tobacco, there's a little vanilla, dried fruit. There's a wonderful nuance of stemmy herbs here. Oh, it actually uh, grows that stemmy herbalness uh, on, the, on the nose. And in the mouth, you have a seamless wine, juicy acids, almost with an orangey tone, ripe tannins, just have a very hint of austerity, adds freshness on the, in, on the palate, a little bit of blueberry on the back end, a little bit of chocolate on the finish. Complex, nuance, and powerful. When I say powerful, I don't mean overwhelming. None of these wines are like a Napa Cabernet. They're all medium-bodied plus the first one, the Grau Vasco, is just medium bodied, but they're long, they're refreshing, they are beautiful wines with food, and they are absolutely some of the best values in the marketplace today. Uh, I don't know any place else where you could get, taste through two cases of inexpensive wines and end up with four wines like this, two at 10 bucks, two at 11 bucks, one at seven bucks, that are fantastic pa palate pleasers all around. So I strongly recommend you get out there and you try some of these wines. Um, I know that I will, and uh, that's it for this time on Snooth. Thanks very much.